What's up, everybody? Happy 2021. The Smoking Word Podcast is brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. If you want to support the show, you know the deal. Go cop some merch. Everything is done in-house by a boy. You can also catch the podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, and YouTube. But everybody, you know the deal. It doesn't count unless you subscribe. You have to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Leave a comment. It's free. So all it costs is a couple of minutes, and we got to represent. You can also catch me on Instagram at HoyerRock357. Everything, you can keep up to date with everything. Madball, Smoking Word, and Casa the Rock. We've got a lot of good shit planned for 2021. I figured let's start off the year right. with Phil- Philadelphia's finest black belt, my boy, Hardcore Kid, BJJ United, Jerry Weiner. Let's set this shit off. Welcome to the Smoking Word. Oh. Now, what up? What up? Now, you, what? You, you were in the room and then you disappeared. <laughs> I was in and out. What's going on? Nothing, man. Everything's good. How about you down there? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How's everything over there in um, Philadelphia? It's sunny Philadelphia. It's, you know, it's Philadelphia's Philadelphia. You know, the sun hits it only part time over here. Um, it's, it's, it's not like Miami, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, we're chilling up here, chill. It's cold, right? Freezing. Yeah, I heard you. I mean, like, not to brag, like, you know, obviously it's beautiful down here. No, but it's been kind of cool down here too, but I've been looking and it looks, is it extra cold or normal cold? I mean, normal cold. It snowed yesterday a little bit, like snow, rain, snow, rain, back and forth. It's gloomy. Yeah, yeah, and what's up with you, and, for, and how's everything? So, what you been doing, like, so, like, this is the shit. Um, um, hold on one second. This. this is the shit. What I was wondering because now there's like, um, some some states are having um new lockdowns and you know and a relock re- relocking down and different things happening. What's the deal over there? Like, are you in? Are you out? Like, is the school open right now? What's what's the deal? We reopened up today. So uh, today was our first day back uh, with the school. Uh, we were closed for three weeks again, almost a month. Um, so yeah, today was our first day. It started with 6.30 a.m. class. Um, and there was a bunch of people there already this morning, which is great. And then uh, 11.30 a.m. today, and then back to normal tonight, hopefully. And then we'll see what happens, you know what I mean? Um, you never know, but yeah, we're back open. Training, yeah. let's, let's Yeah, off. we're gonna go into all that shit, all this crazy law shit. So I was just wondering, like, I was like, fuck, man, it's, daily businesses are changing, you know, the way they're running, if they're even running and whatever. But I was like, but yes, yeah, no, this, this, this is going to be the first one I dropped this year. And I figured, you know, I'd get you on to, That's uh, right. to talk <laughs> some shit. And it's been a minute. And I'm um, fucking, um, but yeah, no fucking, I wanted to get into it because I got, like I said, um, on this shit, I was like, obviously, I wanted to show on the in our world that there's different walks of life. Like, you know, we always talk about it, you know. People are doing different things, and I wanted to, you know, um, showcase it with, like, you know, like, from dudes like Kamal, who was a comedian, to Eric, who, you know, kickbox, you know, the, the fight game and, and the hardcore scene has a... a always a connection in the you know underground movement so yep and you know and 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 you've been having another little a kind of like a comeback of comeback so i was like yo you know you've been in in, 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 in the hardcore spotlight lately so i was like yo like you know let's let's talk some shit that's right that's right yeah um <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, but you know what's up? What okay? What I because you know I know your whole story, but I you know I like that the story that because again like a lot of kids in our world, especially now jujitsu, it's next level in the world, you know, and especially in the hardcore scene, a lot of kids are training and whatever. But um, even before jujitsu, you know, hardcore kids mixing with the jujitsu that came in later. But you're both of those things. And that's what I was like. That's what I like about the whole thing, like the connection on 
the music and the whole, the, you know, lifestyles and shit. Philadelphia. So, all right, uh, how how you came up in Philly? Like, like, okay, like, um, you know, I'm a New York kid. I grew up, you know, you know, in my neighborhood, everything was hip hop, and then you had, you know, uh, 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 in certain neighborhoods there was, um, you know, the Italian and some of the, 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 the some of the Latin kids had the heavy metal. You know, it was hair metal or thrash metal, whatever it was at the time. But that was my neighborhood, you know, and I got into the the whole music because of my brother. In general, coming up in Philly, how did you come up? Were you into music early on? Did you come up with your, I know you put your family had sports involved. Like what was your come up with in Philly? So pretty much it was it was uh similar, you know what I'm saying? Like I lived on like uh the area in Philly it was like right by Cheltenham Ave. So it was like um right like the the farthest northern part of Philly. Um, and then like when I grew up a little bit, I moved to South Philly later on and stuff like that. But so it all started pretty much for me, I was into metal as a young kid, you know what I mean? Um, metal and skateboarding. That was it from, yeah. uh, from literally like a super young age, preteens and everything like that. And then, um, that evolved into more of a punk rock thing and then it evolved more to a hardcore thing. And then I remember like. AF and sick of it all kind of being even like the misfits a little bit and all that being like my crossover a little yeah. and then um, you know the thrash metal and everything kind of evolved for me and then like skating and going to shows all the time kind of evolved for me and then jujitsu fit in there probably around like when did I start I started in 95 jujitsu so like um, I was still in high school so like all those things together, I was going to shows. I, I'd go skating at Love Park in the day, <laughs> um, go to jujitsu class in the afternoon or night, and go to a show later at night. Meet all my boys. So that was my daily like routine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like the exactly very same shit how we came up out here. But let's rewind now. That's what it is. A lot of people, and you don't always talk about it, but skating. You were like. You know, you 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 are you were doing your thing as a skater for a while, right? That was like your main thing before training, right? It was, it was like I, I probably had an opportunity to take that pretty far at some point, um, but my body got I, I beat the shit out of my body at a young age, um, like I fractured my coccyx bone, both my ankles, both twice, both my wrists, smashed my head all over the place, which we'll get into later. <laughs> um, and then um, I, at one point, I was when I was doing both, I kind of made a decision, like, where do I want to go here? My body, yeah, so I decided at one point, like, you know what, I'm going to pursue jujitsu and kind of put skating on the back burner a little bit, um, because I was I was having a hard time going into class, like, with my, like, broken back and broken ankles and just, like, all beat up. So at, at that point, like, I did have some sponsors in skating at that point. And I decided to kind of like, I, I just transitioned um, into full-time jujitsu and put skating on the back burner. You know what I mean? And it kind of just evolved from there. And honestly, yeah. the, skate, the skating led to jujitsu because I was skating by uh, my first jujitsu school one day and my boy came outside. He's like, oh, Jared, this is the place right here. And that was it. So it's kind of skating's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask because I know that story that you were skating by. He, he, put, he put you on. And before that, did you ever think about fighting? I mean, like, or, or did you do anything, you know, any type of, uh, you, you know, every kid does karate as a kid. You know, yeah. like nine out of 10 kids did karate as a kid or something, you know, for even if it's for I, a week, you know, a month. Yeah, I never really did karate. Um, there may or may not have been an awful lot of. Tussles growing up, you know what I mean, in school and in the street a little bit, you know what I mean, just with friends and shit happens. You win some, you lose some, you know what I mean. That's just part of the sport. That's part of the street yeah. growing up. Um, so like, e even the way I skated was a little more aggressive. The way I lived was a little more aggressive. I was an angrier youth, you know what I'm saying. So like, um, these things kind of all transpired into this. Who who Because I used to skate too. Believe it or not, I know about my physique. People don't think that, but you know, I was airborne. Now I don't know about airborne, but we used to ride. We all came up skating in New York. You know, a lot of riding back then. Guys coming up because um, you know, we grew up with a you know Philly's close to New York, so a lot of Philly guys would always come to New York. You would always it was always the same page as New York in a lot of ways. You know, like right. uh, you know the 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 styles of of what what was in, in style at the time. Who were you guys back then? So, so like, um, when I was skating at, like, the skate parks and stuff a little bit, too, like, uh, 
I, I used to, uh, I really like like Barker Barrett, um, Tom Boyle, rest in peace, who was one of like, uh, he was one of my original like vert ramp guys back in the day. And then as I got into the streets a little bit, like um, obviously like Ricky Ayola and, and Serge Tronowski and like all like little Stevie Williams, he, he was younger than me, but like he was one of the best in Philly. Stevie was so good ahead of his time. Uh, Freddie Gall. Um, and then the New York guys like Bobby Puelio and the uh, Cardona brothers and, and stuff like that. Harold Hunter, all those guys, man. Like I used to come to Brooklyn banks a little bit and skate there. Like Philly yeah. always be skate. Like we go to love park and we, we'd always skate both cities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The banks were dope. I grew up again. Like, you know, we, I, I was more of a street skater. We were skating the streets, but everybody, you know, at one point everybody was skating and then I was, you know, there was there weren't a lot of ramps around in, in Queens. I actually had a half pipe later on, a mini half in my yard. I only I was the only guy in like in my <laughs> fucking whole area in the hood that had a fucking mini half in my fucking That's yard. Awesome. But then we got into like you know g- girls and getting into trouble. So then you know how that goes in hardcore. And then yeah. you know the, you know the skating got pushed to the <laughs> side and shit. And then we were like, <laughs> but I always loved it, and it always leaked into um you know. Uh, if you went to that, you were kind of more open into alternative shit for some reason. Yeah. You know, you're skating, BMXing. It was, you know, tattoos or fighting, drinking, smoking, fight. You know, it's always let, let into something. So you you went to skating and, and did that you already did, and the skating was with the metal. How was the connection? Who put you on? Somebody always puts you on with the music and everything, you know? Yeah, like the, the metal came from like when I was a, a – this is weird because no one ever asked me this before. Like the, a childhood friend, all right, a, a woman who used to babysit me and my brother back in the day, okay? Um, her son was older than us, and he was in the metal. And like he used to show us all his like his metal records and metal collection and stuff like that. And he even showed me and my brother a Tech 9 he had in his closet when we were kids. I'll never forget that. But <laughs> – and the day goes everything you see. There's always leads to one uh, degenerate, yeah, cool yeah, uncle no, kind of like. Yeah, the fucking tech in the closet. And I was like, yo, me and my brother Blade were like, yo, this guy had a tech. We didn't know what that was back when we were kids. We'll never forget that. My dog's bark. I'm sorry. But um, so then um, that's what got us in the metal. You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember for, for Christmas and the Hanukkah and all the holidays we'd celebrate because we did both. Um, we we we. They got, I remember specifically, like, that family got me Iron Maiden shirts. They got me, like, the Aces High shirt. They got me all this stuff. And I was like, yo, that put me on. And then when I was 12 or 13, maybe 12, uh, my first metal show, my uncle took me to at the, to the Spectrum to see Iron Maiden and Anthrax. And I was wow. like, oh, I was like a little metalhead with a jeans jacket and all the patches singing along to all the songs and all, like, the elder metalheads. And the crowd was like, yo, this young guy, I know I had the long hair. Have you seen the pictures? Yeah. And, yeah, so that's that's kind of what put me on, you know? Do you remember? And then you were skating. So you were skating, you metalhead kid, skating around. Do you remember where the whole punk or the hardcore angle first entered your fucking, where, you know, entered your body and started destroying it from the inside out? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I remember... Um, it was, I can't remember what grade it was, but a kid had a, a Misfits tape, all right? He had, uh, I think it was Walk Among Us. Yeah, Walk Among Us, like a Misfits cassette great, tape. Great record too, man. Yeah, and I was like, yo, let me borrow that. I never gave it back. I still have it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I remember, so I was like, yo, it was different, you know what I mean, for me. And I was like, then one thing led to another. Like I said, like that led to AF that led to sick of it all that led to everything you know what i mean and then kind of that crossover for me started happening with like the death angel and like the the nuclear assault yeah. and it's like the thrash metal a little bit for me and then you know that's when the af kind of kicked in that's just, so it, it was a cool transition like sacred reich and all that you know what i mean yeah. and I, like you know sod <laughs> and yeah. uh yeah, and that's that's how kind of it all transitioned for me into hardcore straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, because again, same shit. Like that was the big thing, you know. In uh, New York too, it's like the the metal. You know, you either get stay in the metal zone or you you cross over into the hardcore shit. You know, Philly was like because I grew up going to Philly a lot as a kid because we have like family there. So as mm. a kid, we would go there, 
And it was just like a foreign land to me because I was like, yo, it's like New York, but it's far. You know, when you're a kid, everything <laughs> seems so far away and it's like fucking two hours away. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like an hour and a half, but I'm fucking, um, yeah, and fucking, and you remember, and then you ended up, you ended up playing a band. So you ended up, uh, like, how, you, how did that, how you fell into playing in a band? What made you want to play in a band and all that shit? Because um, I know a lot of people that love this shit that want no part of a band. Right. You know what I mean? They're so, like, you know, just don't want no, nothing to do with ha- get, getting on a stage, you know? Because I was always into writing, like writing music and writing story, whatever, you know what I mean? So like, uh, our, the first band we had in Philly was, uh, it was called Frontline. And um, we actually, we played with you guys once or twice in Philly. I remember at the YMCA, we played with you guys. We played with you guys. I, I remember that YMCA. Yeah, it, it was like us, Hate Breed. Uh, you guys, it was a good show. I still have a flyer for that too. Um, so that that band was cool. I was in that band with my buddy Max, who passed away a few years ago. Um, and he was in that, uh, he was in Eating Alive uh, recently before he passed away. And then, um, was it? And uh, so that, that's that band, a name, Eating Alive. Yeah. That's a name, right? Yeah. So, like, um, I miss Max. Max was a good dude, very talented uh, musician. Um, so we had that band, that band lasted a few years. We actually, we put out like a, we put out a, a record and stuff like that. We did a demo, we did seven inch, we did a record. It did, it was like, I felt like a little ahead of its time for Philly. Cause it had like a little, it was, it was like, it was metal, hardcore, hip hop ish, but like straight hardcore, you know? So it was a little, it was cool. So that faded away. We all seen. And then recently, what with like two years ago, uh, a year ago, uh, we did another band called guillotine. And then uh, me and Ruben initially got together and uh, started writing some music. And then um, and then Stress helped us put all the music together and everything like that. Then like Chuck Treese and and then uh, Ruben moved to a different state. So it was like me, Colin, uh, Chuck, uh, Paul and Travis. We all played a few shows like we played This Is Hardcore. We put out like a. a yeah. Few- but yeah, no, no that's good because I remember when you were doing that. That's the shit I love about. Um, um, I'm doing music. You know, people think that you got to be, to be in a band, like you got to be, oh, I'm going for, oh, I want to play arenas. You could do it for just fun and you could have that shit forever to let off steam and just, you know, to break bread with your people and play a show or two and you could always come back to it. You know, you don't got to take it serious like that. You know what I mean? Like people don't, you know, that's the beauty of it. You could take it serious or take it for therapy. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like a, like a punching bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's the great part of it. But yeah, like, all right, no, now I want to get into the shit because um, you know me, I'm a fucking, people that know me, I mean, you know this already, but a lot of people, you know, I've been following the whole BJJ game since, you know, the early, you know, like everybody, you know, I think, you know, the early ultimate fighting, you know, championships put everybody on. You know, to 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 yo, what what is this fucking skinny Brazilian dude? How's he beating all these fucking gorillas? You know, I hated Hoist when I first saw the UFC because I was like, because to me he was like, I, I I could feel the cockiness off of him, but I was amazed on what he was doing. I kept saying, how the fuck is this guy winning? Like that's what is bothering me. Like you know, I don't like how some of his wins look. Because, you know, I didn't understand the game. I'm just seeing him, like, you know, just kind of laying on somebody and the guy's tapping out, and I didn't understand it. You know, now, again, you know, you're learning, okay, the positions, the guy's this and that. But I didn't get it at the time, but I was amazed. I was like, why are they giving up? This that He's just laying on them, you know, or whatever. And then I kept seeing it, and then as I seen him fight guys with different disciplines, and I'm like, you know, okay, there's, a, there's something – amazing to it you know what i mean i was like i gotta learn this shit because if we ever in a fight like you know we you know we seem to be active we were very active on the streets at one point i said i want to be able to know what to do and what not to do and if the motherfucker knows this shit i gotta be able to know how to neutralize this yeah so you know and um so i found it through that you know what I mean? You found it through, like, that's why I, your story was bugged out, too, that you were skating by and your, one of your homeboys put you on, you said, right? Yep. Yep. He called you over. And and who what, what school was that? Who, who was the... That was what, uh, my, my friend Bean, who was training there. He's an old hardcore dude, too. Uh, he was an old skinhead, you know what I mean? Out of Philly and Jersey and stuff like that. Old school, old school. Like, one of my original mentors coming up. 
And then um, that was the original Max exercise where Steve Maxwell was the coach there. And yeah. then, uh, yes, and Steve was the Philly OG, the guy. Yeah, the, and he, he he came up on the Horion, right? It was on the Horion, right? But yeah, he was he came up on the when, when Helson, Horion, when all the brothers were together, even, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, from that original that original time in, in, in the U S where it was just like that, that rare time where everybody was together. Steve got that good. Got yeah. That good everybody. Um, so yeah, it was at 707 chestnut street skated by boom, beam popped outside. He's like, yo, come up, meet Steve. And that was it. That's all she wrote. Yeah. No. And that's why I, I tell people because, um, the richness in the, in the, uh, you know, from the source, it, it was in Philly with a guy like Steve because again he was learning from the brothers when you know he was fr- part of the, er- the you know the first guys that 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 were, were that made rank in America the first Americans that you know that were put on you know what I mean and they were taught you know from the brothers you know what I mean and was around with the the father with Helio and all that you know there's a lot of classic shit that guy and that guy was very innovative you know Maxwell you know he's like yeah. you know you know he, you know. The different, you know, how he's into the game and all that tough dude too, and and a, and another guy too, not a very huge guy in, in body frame. So it was good to see guys like that were able to show the sport. You know what I mean? Like you, it, the the beauty of that shit, you had to show it the way they did. You had to show that a little guy could beat a big guy because you had to show the beauty of it. You know what I mean? Like the the, the magic. Yeah. Of jiu-jitsu, you know what I mean? Yeah, Maxwell. He he was in the sense of, like, a hard-nosed dude, like, country dude, you know what I mean? And he brought that wrestling into jiu-jitsu, too. Right, exactly. So, so, like, that was a, a new thing, like, for back then, like, bringing those good wrestling takedowns and, you know, yep. like, hard-nosed, grind-your-head-in-the-face style. Like, you know, that stuck with me forever, you know? Um, so that was good. And I'm kind of my size, too, you know? So, like, it was yeah. a good, definitely a good mentorship for me, you know, in the beginning coming up. Yeah, and then and, and that was the shit and fucking and um and you think because um uh, you think you picked it up quick or you picked it up average speed or you found because everybody's different and you know I know from from you know I, I've trained on and off you know for fun for many years but I learned that yo it really is a sport that any size any age could do you know you could find from it you could take from it you could alter your training from it. You know, yeah, are you going to be an 80-year-old UFC fighter? Maybe not. But you will learn how to, you know, protect yourself and how to finish somebody if right. needed. You know what I mean? Um, uh, yeah, like um, 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 in so, general with the... So, like, I feel like you were saying, like, I feel like I picked it up, I guess, fast somewhat in the beginning um, because I was there every day. And uh-huh. then uh, and I was so competitive. I hated losing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, yeah. yo, you you were getting tapped out by chicks back in the day. You were getting tapped out by chicks, like you know what I mean. It happens, you know. These girls were training for a while. You're brand new. You're getting triangled. You're getting arm locked. You're getting hurt. Oh yeah, there's girl serious girl power so, going on. Yeah, they ain't playing time. games. So like, you really have to like throw all that macho shit out the window, kind of like when when you're when you're in the room. Even now, nowadays, same thing. Oh, and yeah. got going there with like a learning mentality and and you know just just open your mind to learn um but yeah when i was young i didn't like losing i didn't like losing to anybody so i was in there every day and just training and training and training they eventually gave me a job in there cleaning the machines cleaning the mats like and all this stuff so which was that was a blessing in disguise too because that really kept me out of the bullshit when you know a lot of shit was going on out there yeah. kept, kept me in the mats and then um so yeah so i was there every day so it definitely helped like and, and again you know um Obviously, you know, you know, you're gonna be biased because obviously, you know, you 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 own a school. Obviously, you love the art, but ain't it great? Everybody should know some of this. Like everybody, like I really believe that. Right. I I got no money invested, but a love for it. You know, and I tell, especially girls, when girls right away go, that's the first thing. You know, are women because the whole the whole. The whole art is a strength and size not being the main factor. Right away, you know, you know, it should be taught in every fucking school. You know what I mean? They got people playing kickball. What the fuck? Who who the fuck is gonna use kickball in life? Ever. <laughs> When's the last time you kid you played kickball? Never. 
Yo, kick ball was off the hook, though. You get the squishy ball, you know, y'all, that bitch would fly. Like it, I had fun, but when's the last time, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, it's like, get the fuck, you know, like everybody, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do like, um, you know, you remember the exercise days? And then yeah. they have, okay, some of it, all right, push-ups, sit-ups, but then some of it was bullshit, like, you know, yeah. how you could hop on one leg for like, you know, five, you know, it's like some bullshit, it's like. You know, they should have like, you know, a self-defense day, you know, like something like that, you know, especially now. But ain't it crazy? Like, all right. Well, I asked you this because um, this is a good question, because uh, a lot of people ask this about, you know, putting their kids into a new art. And I had told you this with my son early on, too. What's a good age you think kids should start training in jujitsu? I, I, we usually... Uh, it all depends on the kid, I think, like, and the attention span and stuff like that. Like, we, we usually do, like, four. We take them at, like, four, three, in my opinion. Like, you can put them on the mat, let them roll around and run around. But are they really yeah. are they focusing? Can they focus for more than a half hour, 45 minutes? You know what I mean? It seems like it seems like four years old is the age where they come in. They can actually focus with the other kids for about a half hour, 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That's the age I would recommend, but every kid's different. You might get some prodigy who's three years old in there running around breaking kids off, and that, that's that. I've been waiting for you to ask. You know what I mean? And um, she goes, um, uh, yeah, you know, he's very – he has a lot of energy. Maybe you should put him into something to burn. So right away I put him in a jiu-jitsu program. And no exaggeration, you know, in two weeks his whole attitude changed from maybe just – you know, it doesn't even got to be BJJ even a martial arts or putting them in a, in a, some type of martial arts, you know, a, a place where they're going to have to take instructions and use their body and, you know, and, and exert energy. I mean, you know, my son's whole game in, changed in two weeks. She, they told me, I don't know what you did, but keep doing it. And I said, I put them in a jujitsu program and that's, awesome. that's, you know, and, and, and I know the benefits of it, but I'm also was a grown man when I started training. You right. Know, so. You know, but yeah. I also try to sell the benefits of it to kids and shit. And you know, because you also have a kid that's around a gym and all that. All that. When um, I, like I never forced it on her neither. You know what I mean? And that was like uh, she finally just started wanting to do it on her own. And uh, I didn't want her to. Uh, I didn't want her to have that pressure of being my daughter on the mat neither. So I actually I never teach the classes that she's in ever. Yeah, I don't want her running to me like daddy, daddy, daddy. I want it. No, she's got to be a student just like everybody else in there. Um, that's important to me. But yeah, when she's in class, you could definitely tell her behavior is better. She burns all that energy. Like on this last Christmas break we had for the last 12, 14 days, whatever it was here. And she had no school and there was no schedule and we were shut down. This kid was an animal, you know, literally yeah. out of control. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So like, yeah, so having her back and she's going back to class today. School started again today. She's in school. And thank, thank the God. gods, my son, too. He's in the next room doing his school while we're over here talking shit. So, uh, yeah. So to get that structure back because it's super important. <laughs> I agree. And you know, son, I, 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 we skipped over that. I wanted to bring up that. I remember that, that I liked about, you know, again, I have this thing like, you know, Again, with the jujitsu, I love the, the game. I love where it is. I ain't one of these old school guys that hates the new school or whatever, but I'm lucky that I was around it in the early days to be around, to know where a lot of shit comes from and whatever and how things were. And one thing that I loved in the early days were how these, and I know you were involved with these challenge matches when people would roll up to fucking schools and, you know, because I know that would go on a lot. And, you know, and, and back then people don't understand, like now, you know, there's techniques online daily. You know, back then, you know, people wouldn't even let you in certain certain schools wouldn't even let you through the doors, you know, without an attitude or, you know, it's very political and secretive. And you you remember how it was, you know what I mean? It was fucking yeah. crazy. Like, um, I know yeah. during the chat and people would roll up because it was still very new too. how are you involved with that shit? Because I know you were involved with that shit. Like, like, um challenge matches for people out there that I don't know what we're talking about people in the early days of jiu-jitsu and jiu-jitsu schools other martial arts schools and also jiu-jitsu guys wrestlers and tough guys would roll up to schools and challenge the guys and they would basically have fights in the school so yeah. in the school the teachers usually would call some of their guys you know the, the tough guys they have in their class to represent the school and fight these guys 
And my friend over here, Jared, was one of these guys. <laughs> so, so let me. So what? Well, you know, you know, I'm one to, you know, I've had my challenge matches, but not in dojos. You know, they were usually in bars, you know, in the back of clubs. But <laughs> like, 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 walk through one of the situations that happened. Like, how? Like, name, name one of these times that it's happened. Like, how did it happen? You know, walk us through the whole story. You know, uh, people rolling up, and then how how everything panned out, and them getting you and you having to take care of business. Um, Now's your time to brag, because you're not a bragger, but this yeah. ain't bragging, this is you talk, talk, telling something that happened, a factual. There was a there was quite a few, let, let's say back in the day, you know what I mean? And some of my classmates at the time handled it, I handled it, you know, there was a few, even Maxwell had to step up and handle one or two. Like, yeah, um, yeah, that's when, hard. Yeah, I remember one specifically, the student didn't fare too well, and Maxwell was so fed up, and he's older at this point. He's like, you know what, I'll handle this. And he <laughs> stepped in and broke the dude off. But, um, yeah, that, that was humiliating to watch, actually. I was like, what the hell is going on here? But anyway, um, yeah, but good for him for stepping in and doing it. Um, so let's pick one. We'll pick the one um, – all right, we'll pick the one I, I – the one you see in the video you see. We'll yeah. Pick that. All right, all right, so, all right, so this guy, I think he he may have came in for a class or two previously. He was a wrestler from another another college, and he had signed up to fight MMA under Steve Maxwell's name, but none of us knew who he was. Uh -huh. All right, so I go, yo, Steve, who's this guy on this MMA card fighting under your name? And I was like, I think that's the guy right there, and he. <laughs> up and steve's like who are you and the guy's like I, i'm gonna fight under you you're the only place steve's like i don't even know you you don't even train here and the guys pretty much was like well i could take anybody here and steve's like oh can you so right away i was like i'll do it uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'll do it and I, I i just didn't i wasn't crazy about this guy anyway i didn't it was something about yeah. it um so the guy was bigger, you know what I mean? I was young. It was like 97, maybe, 90, well, whatever. How, how long, how much training, how far in training in you were in at that time, ballpark? I was a blue belt at that time. So All right, blue belt. A couple so, years in. A year in, two, in, two years in, right? Yeah. Um, so literally, Steve's like, go tape your hands up. I'm like, tape my hands up? And he told the other <laughs> tape your fucking hands up. So we had like, we taped our hands like old school, and we fought. Um, we fought twice that day. The first one, the guy actually took me down with a nice double leg, but I was able to finish from a triangle arm lock pretty quickly. And um, the second fight, I remember we were squaring up, and I all I hear from Steve is, Jared, tee off, fists, exact quote. Yeah. I, was like, oh, shit. So I was like, all right. And the way the dude's wrestling stance was, he was like low and hunched, you know what I mean? So yeah. We were hitting the face a little bit and putting some fists in his face a little bit. And, and eventually it ended with him, like, taking a bad double leg shot and, you know, a few rights and a knee to the mush. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, it was a lot of stitches across the nose and face. And, <laughs> um, he's bleeding all over the place. And he ate the shot up. I'll give the dude props. He ate it up, but he didn't know where he was. So the, they stepped in and stopped it. Um <laughs> Usually I, I didn't really feel bad about things like that because the dude kind of asked for it. But that was the first time I was like, oh, that kind of sucked. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, him. yeah, the dude's grill was fucked up. So actually the part that was no video is I went downstairs after that fight to see if the dude was all right. Um, yeah. I was like, and the dude was like, yeah, man, good fight. He was cool. I was like, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, that mutual respect was there for actually throwing down. Um, asked him if he needed any help with anything. You know, he said he was good. And uh, that was it. And believe it or not, that dude in that fight came back to Maxercise a few weeks later and signed up as a student. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So that, he, that, it's, it, that's how it worked. You know, you know, I give guys credit like Eric, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, you know, the story, the story with him and Henzo. Right. You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, that's how he you know, met, you know. He had the balls to, to, to challenge you challenge these guys. There's a balls in that. You know, if you know how to yeah. fight or not to, you know, because there's guys that. Are athletic in this, but they won't fight or stand up for themselves. You know what I mean, or you know, or do what they got to do when needed. You know what I mean, yeah. and that's the thing. But um, and and this is a thing that um, this this is kind of like, you know, something for the jujitsu heads. The question is, you know, obviously back then, um um, it's crazy how the game changed. Like back then, you got into jujitsu to want to. 
not even so much do MMA, but fight for real, like you know, street fight. Yep. You would fight. Now people don't do that. They come in to learn jujitsu. Right. It's very yeah. different. Now. Very it's, different. Right. It's it, it's so it literally went from one way to other, you know, one side to the other. It, it really did go from learning, wanting to learn how to fight on the street, on the pavement, on the sidewalk, anywhere to playing a sport um, or, or just like a different, more mellow lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, which, which is cool. And I really I love both. I love I love all the aspects of it because that's what I, I love competing too. You know what I mean? But I guess you could stay like the style of jujitsu that I teach still to this day is a little it was a little more aggressive and straightforward and stuff that will work on the street with working in the tournament as well. You know what I mean? Not just all barambolos and yeah. all this stuff, which is great, which we do as well. But I, I want my my student base to learn those basic fundamental things that will make them victorious if someone fucks with them in the street. Yeah, yeah, and it's dope, and you know, that's the thing that I see, and that's why it's great that you came up that way, that you got that, you know, again, you carry that shit on to the guys you teach, and like, that yeah. early, you know, again, hard, no, even then, like, again, imagine not like, you know, imagine somebody coming now, and you put, not that none of your blue belts couldn't do that now, but, you know, you got so many other ranks higher that you could put up some guys that are more fitted towards let's say an MMA fight than a jujitsu man. You know how you got guys that are good in different things. Back then you had to be ready at any time and be a little bit of everything, yes. you know, cause they would call you out and you would, you know, you would want to represent, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there, there was another bad one that happened too. Like uh, at, at this school or at, I think it was like 2008. And this one ended very bloody and violently um, with a tooth lodged in my knee and, weapon the party yeah it was, I, a real, it was a real party and uh well, well, that wasn't what the guy came in the school right yeah remember i told you that story yes you I guys played that. rock like two nights later and i told you that story i remember that it was crazy and uh yeah that one was bad that one like the dude ran back in and tried to stab me and shit and then i had to chase him out with something else and then you know yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was it was it was quite a party but it, it was the same nonsense though it all started from a challenge match and like at that time, I was so enraged because he came and interrupted my class and like disturbed my class and made a scene. So I I didn't feel bad like I did back in the day. Like the fight spilled into the front lobby, it spilled into the street, <laughs> it spilled everywhere. Yeah. So it, it should have been it should have been it was avoidable and it should have been, but like my anger just took over at that point. Like, you know what I mean? So that's the shit yeah. I try to avoid at all costs at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, and um uh, how, all right, let me ask you this. How long were you training before you felt like, yo, I want to become somebody that I want to teach? Like, you know what I mean? Because teaching also ain't for everybody. Because that was the one thing I experienced. I was lucky training early on that when I had the best, the be well, Henzo having the best teacher in the world, like not just being a family member, you know, the dude's a special guy, When it, especially when it comes to the game. He knows it all and he just knows how to break things down. There was also other, you know, OGs in the BJJ game that I got, you know, that they would teach a class or whatever. And then I, that's where I learned that, you know, there's some great BJJ guys, but not everybody's a great teacher. Right. Henzo, you know? for the record, Henzo, my, one of my all time favorites in the whole world, but just like a special human right there. Yeah. Like, yeah. In amazing. every sense, you know, like, like a, we always talk about it, you know, <clears throat> as a human, as, you know, a fighter, he's what a fighter is. You know what I mean? He's yeah. what you want to be. The dude don't, you know, he, he, he if it's up to him, he right now he wants to fight no no weight limit. Right now he still wants to do that. You know, these, this is the type of motherfuckers that they're a rare breed, and that's what I love. And I'm glad that whatever little G BJJ I had was under him and during yeah. those times. But I got to train under some other, you know, you know, guys that are very known in the game now. That I, I remember being like, yo, these guys aren't very good teachers. You know right. what I mean? And not everybody's meant to teach. When Henzo was you know, he'll tell you in two words and you'll, 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 you know, you'll have the tightest game and you're like, wow, he just has that magic. Right. When did you learn that you were like, you know what? I like teaching. You know what I mean? Like I, I might want to really turn up with the teaching. I remember a purple belt. Maxwell was letting me assist his like beginner classes and stuff like that. I, I felt like he, I, I felt like he was almost knew what he was doing with me before I knew what he was doing with me. 
Um, now that I look back on it, he was yeah. kind of giving me that teaching mentorship and and showing like get basically teaching me a trade. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what was going on back in the day, but like, so yeah, that's when it kind of all started pro belt. And then he trusted me enough to give me like the early morning classes to teach on my own. I would wake up at like 6am and go in and wake up and teach these morning classes. And then that kind of blossomed into where we're at today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, cause I, you know, I know when you were, you know, opening your own spot, when you started and all that. So, uh, you know, there's people out there, there's a lot of BJJ heads that that listen to this shit. And, you know, obviously, you know, in the hardcore world, you know, the BJJ world is fucking, you know, it, it's spreading, you know, daily, yeah. which is great because, you know, obviously we are both, you know, fans and in love with the sport and the game and, and all that bullshit. But, um, 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 what, all right, so, you you, you know, you, 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 you're training, where are you training before you have your own spot? You're training somewhere or you, 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 where was the last spot you were training at before you you opened up your own your own place? That was Maxercise. That was uh, I went right, right so at Brown Belt right when I was Brown Belt. I opened my own place in 2002. As a Brown Belt? Yes. Got you. So you went in as a Brown Belt and then you, you, you and that's the, the location you're at now or was that a different no, spot? No, different spot. It was uh, 6740 Bustleton Avenue. And uh, it was it was in like a rougher neighborhood in the city, and then um, we were there till. CasaTheRock.com, home of that fly DIY. You want to support the show? Go cop some merch right now. We got a lot of new T-shirts, shorts, and caps Welcome available. Everything is made in house by your boy on the spot. So show some love, support the movement. CasaTheRock.com is the spot first spot in northeast philly on bustleton ave and we were there like that that neighborhood went downhill pretty quick um by like oxford circle and all that and then uh we literally had kids um like there was a bus stop right outside the window and uh they were fist fighting outside flew through the glass window blood fucking up place like yeah so uh, enough was enough you know what i mean like there were syringes and shit all over the front doors all the time and shit and i was like Yo, i gotta get out of here yeah. Um, so we moved, uh, we moved from that location to the current location where we're at now in 2007. And we've been there ever since. Damn. I remember when you were getting that place ready, 2007, man, that's a long time already. Yep. C crazy. And then, and then, all right. As a new, as a new business owner, especially in, you know, as popping as jujitsu is, is everywhere. You know, and, and also martial arts, you know, that type of game is like a gym. You know, it's rough. It's a rough business, like being in show business. You know what I mean? Like there's highs and lows, even if even if the if the if the, 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 the trend is popping or not, you know, you know, you could have, you know, uh, you know, um, what, what what was it early on? What was the the, the pro what, what like because I know I see the same problem with tattoo artists. I know tattoo artists that do two things. They either rather bounce around or open up their own spot. And a lot of people don't want to risk opening their own spot because you could still have, you know, a good amount of students, but still, you know, not make enough money to, to, to stay above water because the way things turn out with a business like that. Right. Like, uh, like, um, 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 what, what are some of the hard things you found early on? Because you also... At, you know, you, you know, uh, building up a business and it's also a sport that's still not till the last five, 10 years. It really, really blew up. You know, um, you were doing it before that. Like, well, how, what, what, how did you push it? How, like what you had? A I mean, back then there was no real social media neither. You know what I mean? I so exactly. Like, so and we're going to get to that in a second, too, because like where I'm at mentally right now, I kind of I kind of backed away from social media a little bit right now. I'm kind of taking it old school again. I want to see the approach, how far I could take it this year with running the business the old school way a little bit. You know what I mean? So we'll get to that in a few. Um, but uh, yeah, so there was no real social media back then. So it was all like you were literally walking places, dropping flyers and, and you know, at other local stores in the community and word of mouth and the internet. You know, you had your website and stuff back in the day, but it wasn't as extravagant it is today you know what i mean like it was it yeah. was a lot 
honestly, a lot of word of mouth. There was a lot of like just direct marketing and shit like that, that you had to like, there was a lot of, a lot of concrete work. You were out there just on, on foot. You know what I mean? Um, and you know, word spreads, people come through. I, I happen to have a storefront location. So people would drive by and see what was going on, pique some interest. And, and it's, you know, the character of the place was rough. There was uh, rats the size of small dogs running around there. Um, we had an uh, uh, Arabic market uh, next door to us that they were slaughtering sheep and lamb in the back alleyway. Um, cool. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Blunt Clyde, Toby, was, and... Um, yeah, and, um, shout out to Double J. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, it, it was just like that whole environment was just rough, you know what I mean? And it was... Uh, some students were getting robbed at gunpoint around the corner after after walking to the car at night after practice. And it, I was like, oh, this shit's so yeah. we had to get out of there. But, you know, we maintained a, a hard image there and uh, we trained hard. There was no heat, no air conditioning. So we'd literally come in for the morning class um, from uh, wiping the mats the night before. It'd fucking be ice on the mats. Crazy. So we'd have a fucking kerosene space heater. To put it up and try to get the shit to melt so we could train in the morning. But yeah, um, but so we started. That's where we started. We started small, worked our way up, and we are where we are now. You know, just yeah. And, and right now, you know, I see just. I know, you know, I see the pictures. I see a, you know, you you got you know you you've even since the COVID, like post COVID, I'm seeing the fucking people coming back, which I'm glad because you know um, you know, it's like um, I, I remember uh, you know motherfuckers going to train that had shit worse than COVID when I was training. You know, some people show up to class that, the you know, they they be, they need to be thrown in battery acid. Yeah. You know, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. They're like, they're like sick and dirty and fucking. And, and, but, you know, like, you know, I get it. Unfortunately, it's a real body to body, you know, sport. So, um, you know, I get it. But it's good to see. And, um, you know, you have, a you know, in Philly, you have to have, you know, you definitely must have one of the most successful schools in Philadelphia, right? You know. Yeah, you, there's there's a few of us who have been around since the beginning with Maxwell and stuff like that who have all done good for themselves uh, with the schools. Um, but, you know, this, this COVID thing kind of, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I know for me, it's at least knocked out half of our student base right now. Like, easy, I would say right? maybe more, maybe more. Um so like classes are small and, and I can't blame people. You can't tell people what to do, how to feel. I'm not going to get involved in the politics of it. I'm not going to, cause it just shit, the spirals out of control. Yeah. Um, I've had longtime friends turn their back on me because I was open. And then I had longtime friends turn their back on me because we closed. So it's yeah. like, you can't win. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I refuse to get into it with these people. Cause you can't tell people how to feel or what to think. You know yeah. what I mean? I just want to keep trucking forward and support my family the best I can. Exactly. You know, uh, you know, like everybody, you know how like people talk about, you know, without getting into, you know, thing that, you know, people want or oh, they have the right to have an abortion, have the right to get tattooed. Well, we have the right to do what we want to do. If that means if we want to, you know, so if we want to support our families, we should have the right to want to support our families by the only means we know how to, yeah. you know, that's our it should be our own choice. You know, and whatever whatever the politics behind it, I won't even get into it. But I know that because <laughs> right now I can't do shit. You know, you know, like you know, you know, we're fucked. The entertainment, you know, people in the clubs, the promoter, everybody's fucked in this. You yeah. know, but you know, right now I could go buy um, you know, um, 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 uh, uh, what you call it? I could buy a a bunch of fucking granola bars, a tire, and some fucking um kettlebells right now at Walmart. But, you know, but I, I can't play a show in can't front play. of, you know, less people than th that are running around in that fucking zoo. You know, I can't play a show in front of fucking, you know, 200 people, be, you know, because of some fucking bullshit. You know, it's crazy. So it really is like it, it definitely my business took a massive hit this year. Like no bullshit. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's uh, it, it's stressful. I'm stressed out. There's there's a lot going on with it. Um, but we're, we're here, we reopened today, like we said earlier, and we're, we're trying to truck forward and we'll see what happens. The future at this point, it's, it's uncertain. You know what I mean? We don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to just try our best to stay afloat and yeah. uh, keep it moving. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm and after and all the years teaching now, how many how many black belts you got under you? I think there's I got I gotta do the count again because I did it last year. Uh since we didn't have a team day this year, it kinda uh, yeah, we couldn't even have our, our annual yeah. team here because that, but there's probably in the forties right now. Awesome. All under you. Under me. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. So there you go. You guys, you know, there's 40 people that got to come through right now. If you ever get thrown in the streets, somebody <laughs> better come through for that master. Oh, <laughs> drunk your master. And, um, but yeah, no. And again, and I, what I want to also talk about, like, you know, I know you started again, um, a lot of your, um, uh, accolades or whatever came as, uh, you know, competing as, in, in your later years. As, well, what do you call them? Seniors, right? What do you call in the, your oh, later man. years, right? Masters. Masters. Yep. And your seniors, you're your senior citizens oh, division. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the senior citizens division. Yo, you're you're killing it. Killing no, it. so I, no, but in the masters, that's where you started. You you, you know, you kind of it seems like you you made most of your noise competing, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was just like um, the shorter time limits or just like uh, of the matches. I mean, I felt like in the end, right before masters, I started competing in masters. I think it was like what was it? Oh nine, maybe. Um, I did decent in the adult divisions right before that, like right before I switched over, I had some good wins right before that. And then, um, but masters, I don't know if it was just a confidence thing. I don't know if it was just like, a, I'm having more fun now thing, less pressure. Yeah. On thing, you know what I mean? And that was it, you know, and you kind of just fall into a rhythm. The more you do it, just like work, it becomes easier. I, I shouldn't say easier because the matches are always hard. There's so many good dudes out there, but, um, you know, it, it just happened. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I had surrounded uh, by a bunch of amazing training partners at that time, which made a huge difference as well. Um, having more higher level guys to train with around that time. And it definitely yeah. bumped all uh, of Yeah, them. you stepped your shit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's definitely but good. It wasn't just me. It was all the guys I was surrounded with as well on the team. That definitely helped all the, the accolades for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And that, and, 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 and the, uh, and the shit is, um, well, because I know, I know from also from chilling with you that again that, and I personally seen that in the, in your later years is where you, I started seeing a lot of the comp, the, the competition. I mean, there's more competitions now anyway than yeah. back in the day. But um, did you compete a lot back in the day? Uh, any of these I B J F B R B twos and all those yeah. what <laughs> things? You did you did a lot of those right back oh, then. Yeah. Right? I mean, I fought a black belt from the day I was promoted to black belt to currently, like through all the adult divisions, I fought the best of the best dudes in my generations. Like I fought all of them. You know, I got my ass kicked a lot. I won some, lost a lot, <laughs> um, <laughs> but that helped, um, that helped get my level up. Just feeling what I wanted to be. You know what I mean? Like feeling these dudes breaking me off and being like, damn, I, I want to get to that. I want to see what this dude's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> helped and I never backed down from any match I was always there you know what I mean in Brazil here in the U.S. everywhere uh Europe Asia Portugal you name it Guam and, the whole it, oh it, yeah and but and 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 besides the BJJ I just remembered and you had some MMA fights I, I did one I did one, one. so I'm that's a, that's a, so let's say not some one but I'm still, undefeated, undefeated. But, but one one means that you had a few because in the gym you got to get into a few before that oh, fight. You know how that yeah. is. Yeah, I got knocked out so many times during it. Like that was ridiculous. Um, so yeah, we did. We did. I'm, an we, you good? No, yeah, I'm good. I was gonna get okay. into. I'm glad something you're saying. Yeah. Finish what you were saying about. Yeah, we did uh, one MMA fight, and uh, the, the, my opponent at the time actually had, ended up having a nice UFC career. And um, I just spoke to him recently. Like, we're still friendly to this day. And, uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah, no. And you like, you're just saying, like, yeah, you got knocked out a lot. And um, I know um, you were dealing with from a lot, of, you know, from a lot of training and a lot of you know, who knows from why. That's why I get into that. You were dealing with uh, some injuries from shit you picked up during training throughout the yeah. years, you know. And that's why I'm, I, I'm, I'm people that know you are psyched to see you competed more now than ever because they know you know for a minute there you were dealing with some shit and now you know you competing a lot means you know you, you, you're where, where you should be you know what I mean and um do you think some of that you had you were dealing with what like you know I know what but not exactly what but you were dealing with like head yeah. trauma yeah we were dealing with multiple head traumas in a short amount of time uh, yeah. multiple, multiple times 
Um, so I, I eventually found the right uh, team of doctors, a group out in, uh, in Pittsburgh um, who, who were dealing with all like the, the famous NHL players and the NFL players. And I, uh, I got, I saw that one, the one doctor personally, Dr. Collins, who's, who's the one who helped Sidney Crosby and all that pretty, pretty famous concussion doctor in Pittsburgh. And he put me, he put me on the right direction with a, a group of great doctors here too. And um, gave me the proper therapy and the proper physical therapy and the eye therapy to get my eyes back together. And, yeah. the, the, you know, so, yeah, I was able to get back into a good place and able to get back out there again and do my thing. But that was a long road, you know. I, yeah. I 2014, it was about a year off from everything. And then it happened again in 2017, I think. It was more than a year off from everything. And it was just from multiple hits in a row. And you know what I mean? Like, people think they... <laughs> I can't take a punch in the face now. I definitely can. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, people think I got that, that glass jaw, but no, nah, I'm still all right. I, yeah, still yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, you see, like, I'm still a meathead. I'm but, still here. All right. I, like, so obviously, you know, I, I bring this up because, you know, you know that shit comes up. Um, head trauma in sports comes up a lot because also, um, you know, my son does, you know, tackle football. And that's something that's talked about. And, you know, and something like a jujitsu, wrestling, football, all get talked about, you know, because, you know, about taking head trauma. Well, obviously, you know, there, there's definitely risk. You know, I've been to hardcore shows that have been more violent than MMA matches. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how that goes. And I'm not trying to justify it. It's all on the person. But um, and obviously your, your head trauma that you were dealing with was an accumulation. Do right. you think it, anything was had to do from your skating days also because i don't know what you took but i know when i skated i fucking banged my head up a lot yeah a lot there was no helmet um, when we rode the streets yeah and, and oh i i think so for sure and i i i did play ice hockey uh oh hell bit. yeah um and um and it may not even even from skating like imagine like doing like 15, 14, 15 step handrails, you know what I mean? But not even landing on your head, but that jar, that constant jar yeah. landing butt or landing, like that rattles you, you know what I mean? So like, I I'm sure it was an accumulation of many, many, many things over the years that have just never really been diagnosed properly. But uh, like I said, better place now. But yeah, I, I, I do believe the shit adds up. And, and yeah. you know, it took me a while to get into a place where I was like, I didn't just get tapped and I on the head and I'd be like, yeah, I'm starting again. You know what I mean? To just being yeah. like back to normal. Yeah, yeah, to be, yeah, yeah, to not get rattled. You know, I, I, I think it was on somebody on one of these doctors on Rogan where I heard it. One of these, we, is that a neurologist, a head doctor? Yeah. Oh, one, it was a head doctor, but they were saying that you could cause brain damage from even from people jet skiing, from just the bouncing on the water. Absolutely. They were saying because they say basically your brain is just shaking in, in the liquid, which you know, and obviously you know, in sports that you know we're talking about involved, you know, you know, getting dumped on your head, even on your back is shaking your brains up, you know, and you're getting dumped on your back, you know, your your your, your, your skulls getting shaken. Was there any specific dumps that you remember that you were like, oh, that definitely was <laughs> a check oh, in yeah. one of them? Hundred percent, hundred, not not even like. I remember in jujitsu specifically, like I'd hit some drag inside singles and I'd run right into my partner's hip bone with my head oh. <laughs> instead of finishing the single on the proper side and out cold. And I remember that. I remember just little things where you're like, yeah, that didn't feel yeah, right. Yeah, you're like, you know I mean? yeah. You got to take a few days like, oh, yeah, you got that feeling again. But now it's just a matter of knowing that it's going to get better even if you do feel a little goofy again for a few days instead of getting right into that panic mode, which can yes. set fucking year you know what i mean yeah. Yeah, a yeah. lot of it up here man like that's that's what people it, it, it can be defeated but you just got to understand how to deal with the anxieties and the depression and the stresses that come with it me and you have had long talks about that and well, yeah. i remember when you talked me off the ledge when we were texting back and forth like about some stuff and yeah it's just a matter of learning how to deal with it yeah no for sure and i know and i know that's what it is because the same shit happened with me like you know the anxiety takes over you know i like i heard this shit i don't know if i said it on one of these but mike tight i just said it on one of these podcasts but mike tyson said it to somebody and that shit echoes to me he goes yo our brains are programmed to, to, to kill to want to kill us so we got to keep it in check and it's a fact because if we don't tell our minds 
hey, stop eating. We'll keep eating. If we say stop drinking, we won't stop drinking. You know, keep stop fighting. We won't, you know, our, we got to constantly check ourselves because our brain is constantly saying more, more, more. And we got to do that. You know what I mean? And, it, and, it, and it's crazy, but it's like, um, you know, uh, um, our brains t- take over. I, I had, I, I started making myself sick because of my head, like what could happen, what I think is happening, but not knowing what's happening. You yeah, know what I'm right. like? You know how that is. We, 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 we automatically make, we make ourselves into doctors, yet we never did one day in medical school. <laughs> but we diagnose all the stuff. Yo, I swear at one point in, in this last year, I was writing out my, my will. And I ain't dying. You know, I'm nothing wrong. But I, at one point I was bugging out so bad that I thought I was going to die because I have, I have a little arthritis in my back. Right. But I thought it was my kidneys. And I thought it was my kidneys because of everything, lifestyle. So in my head, I was already burying myself. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I know. Like, you know, and a lot of people have. And that's, again, you know, I, check, I got myself in check. But, you know, I was dealing with a lot of shit with, you know, the year with my, you know, work with my moms. And then all that fell into place. But then I learned, you know, getting out of the hole. I was like, man, I was just making myself, you know. Yeah. You know, like, you know, what what's happening? What, what why me? Why? Oh, why is this? What's going to happen? What, you know, and then, you, you you know, you're doing all that for nothing and you keep yourself sick when it's yeah. like, um, you know, you got to kind of like uh, force yourself to be occupied. And then if yeah. you could be occupied for a minute, that, that means you could do two minutes. Then you could do three minutes. Then that means, oh, you're right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you, you could make it, it happen. Got another career in psych psychology now. You, you, right. yo. not, not, no career, man. It got to do with like, yo. I just had to deal with that shit, good fuck, because yep. I was gonna kill. Him. I thought I had fucking every ailment in the world, and I was like, you know, again, what helped me was I started training more at home because you know, again, a lot of people dealing with that shit, which is not head trauma, but what came with it. You know, your your own anxiety. You get an anxiety, and then your brain takes over. Yep. What's going to happen with the future? That's what happened when you, you know, same thing. What, what's happening to me? I'm changing. Am I going to be different? Am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be the same person? That shit started making me crazy. And I said, I have to exhaust myself. Yeah, it's crazy. It really is a lot. I'd say like 90% of it's a mental thing. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. Yeah, I would, more people need to recognize that, that they can, they can bust through that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that- and that's why I, I believe it. You know, the same thing like training, a uh, punching bag, doing jujitsu, running. Yo, you exhaust your body. You got exhausted. Then your brain, it feels like you almost got to drain your, your brain of like make your brain into survival mode and it won't worry about bullshit, just about what it needs, like more important shit. Like I just think when you just marinate in there and not stressing your body, it's exactly. just fucking, it's just fucking, you know, like open to anything, like the internet, you know what I mean? It's just whatever you type in is going to wormhole you. And that's what happens. That's right. I get in my brain and I say, y'all, let me go hit the hit. Let me punch the bag. Yep. You know, I start letting my brain go and I start bugging myself out and shit. But fucking what's the deal with you with that? You're, you've been, I mean, obviously you've been training. And so, you know, that's been going good, right? How you're dealing with that shit, right? Nowadays yep. with all your head shit. Yeah, just pr- pretty much exactly what you just said. Keeping myself occupied positively, you know what I mean. Um, focusing on good stuff, you know, the the bad shit that comes in, you gotta compartmentalize it and just, you know, the shit can't affect me unless I let it. You know, yeah, what I mean? and yeah, then, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. kind of that's that's where I'm at, and and those skills, you know, definitely yeah. got a better place. And and what's the plan? For, it's 2021. What's it? What what what's your goal? I mean, obviously we gotta wait on what the fucking uh, what what's able to do. But what what are you hoping it happens this year with everything? Just some some peace of mind. You know what I mean? I, I'd like to have you know the energy level down a little bit. Uh, you know the <laughs> shit is crazy out there. You know the the street the Philly is fucking bad right now. The fucking gun violence is bad right now. Shit is real yeah. rough out there. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, just moved to a new house. I got a little further away from the city, which has been nice. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, living a more, you know, me, I, I'm pretty high strung and I get intense and I get a little crazy at times. But like, you know, I just want a little more peaceful environment around here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right now. 
You know? It's called getting old. Oh, getting old and maybe mature or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good to get away. I like the peace and quiet to get away from it. And especially, <clears throat> you know, you you know, you live a a a a, a higher um what do you call it? Uh, there's more anxiety in the jobs you do you're dealing with, sure. you know. It's it's like uh, sure. so that kind of stuff's good to get away with, you know. Get away from it when you're home. You don't want to be in the shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, not at so. all at this point. I just wanna, I just wanna enjoy some. Try. I want to kind of train again a little bit with no stress. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, you know, maybe do some tournaments again. Which, which, <laughs> you know, see, that's not that's not high on the priority list right now. And just you know, just yeah. Get, business back in a good place too because right now it's in a shitty place you know i just want to get it back in a good place yeah 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 i'm hoping i think it will you know i think little by little people get less and less scared you know and then the new the people that are you know that have been wanting to train waiting for the covid shit to pass to get their first time on the mats is going to happen because that's happening too because you yeah. know that some kids were like right now like yeah i can't wait till this is over to do my first class you know because they just you know, fell into some tapes or some shell, watch Cobra Kai or some shit. <laughs> you know, so. I want to see Mad Ball 2021 also. That's what I want to see. You know yeah, I mean? we're writing a new record. You know how that goes. The same shit. You know, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward yeah, as far as, you know, I'm hoping things start opening up. You know, um, I'm hoping, you know, we could start making music. People's businesses could start opening. People could start getting back to normal lives. With a mask or without it, but let shit start cracking again. You know what I mean? Let people, and, yeah, man. Let's let it crack. You know what I mean? Like, who gives a fuck what people want to do? Let's just, yeah, do, you know, like, yeah. So, but good. So the school's still open, so they could catch you. Where's the location at for anybody who's in the Philly area to go check uh, you out? Four twenty eight York Road, Jenkintown, PA. And there you go. And I want everybody to know, um, me and Jared, um, every year we would do a black and blue roll. That we did it for a bunch of years. Um, during the Black and Blue weekend, we were basically at, yo, know, shout out to Josh and Clockwork Jiu Jitsu and oh, and all the fellas. Um, uh, you know, Mike and fucking Danny and all the fellas. Um, basically, we get together and um, we got a, a bunch of uh, of my boys that they, you know, a bunch of the fellas. They're all black belts and um, and hardcore kids, and we all get together Black and Blue weekend, and we would basically do a a benefit role where everybody comes and trains with each other and we would donate the money to a, to a kid's cause. Cause me and Jared are single ish fathers. You know <laughs> what I mean? And, and we were basically, yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, we were at the time, you know, at yeah. the time, basically we were, you know, talking about like, you know, um, that, you know, it's rough being single fathers. And then we were talking about, basically it came up that there's people with um, no parents at all, that that's even yeah. rougher. And then when we, we had brought up the idea of let's do something, and I remember, you know, right away, we were like, we came up with the idea of the role, and right away, you were like, let's, we, we we're going to do it. You were like, Black and Blue Weekend. And I was yep. like, I didn't even think about it. And then we were like, where could we do it? And you were like, yeah, I think Josh should be down. And we're like, okay, let's ask. You got on the phone five minutes later. We were like, we got the spot, and we started doing it. And, um, and I was glad, because part of it was, came from that, from us the, having the convo, wanted to do something and two something that we did that we talked about that day and it worked we worked. wanted to get uh our a lot of our boys of uh, their uh their first chance to get on the mats that they would probably never step into a gym to just get on the mats and try the jujitsu shit out because we me and jared love it obviously yeah. and we knew a lot of our friends would love it if they gave it a chance so obviously doing the benefit they came out to support us and fast forward as the roles went on every year, we started seeing more of our boys training. And a lot of these guys are training now regularly. True so, story. True story. You know, you know, we talked about it always. You remember, we knew we were like, if they, some of these guys get a taste of it, they're going to get the bug. Cause Absolutely. the, the, the jujitsu bug is contagious. Yeah. And you got a good, you got some of the boys at BJJ United, you got them all over the place. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, That's, yeah, you know, shout, shout out, out to every, you know, Gorilla BJ, you know, Mike yeah, and Chris. Gorilla BJJ. Yep, shout out to Mike Wilson, shout out to Pitchfork, shout out to my man Warren for hooking us up back in the day from Pitchfork. Yeah, uh, you know what's up, but yo, yeah, no, shout out to Danny, you know, fucking SF, you know, fucking El Nino Jim, everybody, yeah. all, you know, Wilson, all the fellas, you know, Josh at Clockwork. We're hoping 
if this year, you know, you know the deal. The minute we can have a black and blue, we're gonna have a black and blue role. So all you jujitsu heads, you need no experience to come and hang out with us. You could come right. train or just hang out. You know, we have a lot of guys from bands coming through. Roger from AF came and trained. Joe from Wisdom. You know, um, um, we have um, Sofia Vergara coming through to, 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 to spar with me. And for everybody out there, I'm 1-0 and because I tapped oh. Jared out just to, oh. just, to, just, to, oh. just to have it all. I retired 1-0 and in my grappling. 1-1. Yeah. One no, one. But, one, but I, have, I have photo proof I, of one of them. I have photo of the Kimura and the choke, actually. But you, you see got the smile. I was doing the Nick Diaz. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was doing like, yo, nah, nah, nah. And then there was the reverse Baron Bola. But all right, yeah. that's the secret footage. That's the all right, we're going to get Joe from Wisdom and Chains to referee the next one. That's right. <laughs> yeah, um, he's going to be there. Right no, but he might be a little bit, you know, on your side because he's in Philadelphia. He is. So. He's a PA guy. You know what I mean? That's my boy. So, right. yeah, I'm going to get Eric. I want, <laughs> all right, we're going to get Philly. I want Eric. I want Eric to be my referee. <laughs> uh, I, I call but, Shark Stress then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yo, no, but yo, definitely anybody out there, go check Jared out. Check him out on Instagram. Follow him. Uh, hopefully, you're gonna be doing more matches this year. You know, you could catch up, you could catch his fights on YouTube. You could catch or um you could catch him at a Harker well, show and try to yeah. start a fight with him and then you're gonna get uh, no, by all the fellas. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't do that anymore. My yeah, guy. nah, nah. But if you want to learn some real BJJ, that's Philly's finest right there. Go support hardcore scene, hardcore kid. Yo, Jarrett, one love. I'm glad to get you on this. You know, um, um, see you soon. Hopefully, we'll be out there soon. I'm, I'm hoping to go out there and record with stress. Sweet. When we're out there, you gotta come and hang out. We'll get do up it. together. We'll have some barbecue or some shit. Definitely. Definitely. Yo, be safe, brother, and we'll talk soon. Right, you too. Thanks, Hoya. Peace, bro. Yeah, be safe. I'll hit you later. You got it. Your peace. peace.